focus much more on the renewable energy part of the universe of keep warm, keeping your cities sustainable warm. Before we go further, uh, maybe next slide, uh, let me just give you some advice on how to use the functions. First of all, uh, be noted uh, that this webinar will be recorded as we wish to disseminate it further to the target audience that cannot be with us today at this very moment. So in that sense, uh, I'm encouraging you to use the Q&A uh, function, which you find at the bottom of your, at the bottom right of your screen, to send some questions, questions that are important to you, but also questions that may be important for others. Uh, we will collect them and eventually we will take the time to answer them with the speakers that we have um, th that are part of this uh, seminar today. If you have technical difficulties, we invite you uh, to use the chat function, not the Q&A function, but the chat function, um, and we will try uh, to solve your problems. But you may also just, uh, as of now, use the chat function and indicate where you're from so we have an idea of uh, where you are located and where you are listening us from. Having said that, I would also like to invite you now to sit back, enjoy the e-seminar and um, yeah, use the time for asking questions. Next slide, please. As you can see, today we will focus on renewable energy in uh, uh, looking at uh, four different countries, um, Croatia, Latvia, Slovenia, and uh, Serbia, that is, to be precise. And uh, the speaker's lineup uh, is quite diverse, also from the representation side uh, and point of view. We will have regional energy agency speaking, we have institute speaking, and um, so, so you can expect a quite diverse um, uh, input for discussion. I also see now in the chat, from, uh, we have even a participant from Iceland. Uh, and I, I believe uh, keeping warm in Iceland is also an issue. So um, welcome also uh, towards Iceland. Um, then maybe I would like to hand over now uh, to my colleague, George, who will introduce you some of the uh, findings um, and uh, to be precise, the Keep Warm booklet, which we are very proud in presenting. George, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen and we can get started with my presentation. And you should be able to see it. So, uh, I'm going to be giving you a slight overview about Keep Warm in general, and you're going to find out much more technical details from my colleagues from our other partners on the project. But I want to give you an idea of what we do as a project. So, today is uh, about keeping cities renewably warm, because we're going to be talking about renewable energy and its role for district heating. So, what I want to uh, uh, first say is that we work with several forward-looking district heating systems in seven different target countries, trying to help them to retrofit themselves to a more sustainable manner and to overcome different barriers. We do so by uh, increasing our capacities through a series of trainings. We also can offer you trainings, so please let us know if you're interested in some of our trainings. We uh, have helped them to develop business plans. This is also a service that we can provide. Uh, we help them to mobilize funding, so looking into grants and applications. Again, a service that we are willing to provide you also in the future. Uh, we work with, uh, we've helped them create some demo cases that are useful to you. Uh, this is somewhat about awareness reading, which again is a service we can offer, and how to, how to integrate these kinds of concepts into key strategies and plans. For example, your local Sustainable Energy Climate Action Plan or your National Energy Climate Action Plan. We can also help you and figure out what makes the most sense to put into there. As uh, Karsten mentioned, we have uh, all these countries. Uh, we have 11 different partners and seven different target countries, plus ourselves and GIZ, the German Development Agency, who is the coordinator of the project based in Germany. 
we mainly work from the other seven countries marked here. What we do is we work on a kind of hierarchy about what sort of retrofits need to be made to Zitricadian. So all these retrofits can lead to more reliable services and all of them can help contribute to climate related goals. Our last webinar, which Karsten mentioned, uh, happened was back in July. The recording is available. It was about retrofitting for efficiency. Today, we're going to be very much concentrating on renewable energy. We won't be talking too much about excess heat, but I will mention that in just a moment. Uh, there's also waste to energy solutions is another option. And there's also about smart heat. And I believe the Latvian case will be talking a little bit about smart solutions for district heating. What we launched at our last webinar, uh, which you can find on our website, is the showroom of replicable and bankable DH uh, pilot projects. And here you can find 23 different pilot projects that are working with Keep Warm. You can find all kinds of uh, details about their operations, about the results they're working on, uh, the resources that are needed to achieve those results. We also have national context. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, in the top case, Slovenia, or the bottom case, Croatia, then you can find out what's basically going on at a general level. And as you can see in the bottom uh, picture, we also have these translated in all seven of our languages. So in English, plus seven languages. What I'm going to be spending more time talking about today is our guidance booklet. We have published it uh, previously, but this is the official launch right now of the guidance booklet. And this is an idea to help uh, help DH companies and uh, policymakers, investors, energy agencies, anyone who's really interested in making DH more sustainably sourced to know why. So we provide technical and financial indicators about specific kinds of renewables. We also discuss some of the front funding trends that are happening from investors and institutions. We highlight some of the environmental and socioeconomic advantages of renewables, for, which is really important for policymakers and public authorities. And for other companies and other stakeholders, there are many emerging business roles that can be found in this kind of a switch. So there's a lot of ways that different stakeholders can take part in this entire process. So first off, why decarbonize the true heating? I may assume that all of you who are here don't need to hear all of this because you are here because you're interested in it. But I'll give you some of the details, uh, a little bit of the details here, but you can find even more in the guidebook, which you can download on our website. There are socioeconomic benefits. So for example, greenhouse gas emissions. These are all the proximate greenhouse gas emissions that come from the fossil fuels. And we can reduce those dramatically to zero in most cases for renewables, but it also has uh, benefits for employment and economy and innovation for your region. And it also just makes business sense for the DH company itself. All these that we uh, are promoting have reasonable payback periods. They have low operating and maintenance costs. The resources are low or no cost. And I also point out that fossil fuel prices are rising. So here you can see a trend that's happening by 2030 that uh, CO2 emission allowances will cost about 55 euros per ton as compared to now, which is 25. So it's going to more than double. So this should be kept in mind. You should build away from fossil fuels if for nothing more than to avoid having to pay for CO2 allowances on top. So you can find out in our guidebook how these different sustainable energy sources stack up with each other. So you'll find details about biomass, solar thermal, heat pumps, excess heat, and geothermal. And for each of these, you'll find uh, a fact sheet which has some basics about technical characteristics and financial data. We even give you some hints about the sort of uh, stakeholders that you should engage and the roles that they might have. And we also have some mission data that's there. So this can be found for all five resources. And just to point out where you can find this on our website. So you go to our learning center, which is lots of resources from Keep Warm and other projects. You go there to technical solutions and cases, and this is where you'll find the showroom. So the first thing I showed you about the 23 pilots. And if you go to the countries in focus, you can find the translated versions on the individual country pages. So for example, here, Latvia. For the guidance booklet, which I just uh, demonstrated to you, you go to sustainable energy sources, also under resources. And under countries in focus, again, on the country pages, you can find the translated versions. We still have, we have two of them, I believe, published. 
the others should be published very, very soon. For example, here is the Serbian one, which is already released. So I just wanted to point out that you can keep on learning with KeyForm. So visit our website, look at the Learning Center. We have a web page for related projects. You can follow our news. You can follow us on Twitter. In the Learning Center, you can find all kinds of guidebooks and other tools, case studies, mapping tools, policy recommendations, insights into financial assistance. We also have training materials in multiple languages. These can be found also on the country pages for the ones in the local language. And as I mentioned earlier, we can offer you training. So contact us if you're interested in our trainings. Additionally, we have events like today's, which can be found on the online uh, events page. And I'm going to point out that on 12th of November, you should already mark your calendars now. We're going to be having our final conference. It's also going to be online. So please mark that down and we glad to see you there. Finally, again, as I've already mentioned several times, we are here to help you. Even beyond the, the project, which is going to be ending at the end of this year, all of us here in the consortium are dedicated to helping you, individually or as a whole. So please let us know what it is that you need and we can help you on it. We offer technical consultancy, consultancy feasibility studies, financial guidance, strategic action planning. We can help you integrate uh, policy market frameworks. We can help you with stakeholders and offer general advice. So please let us know what you're interested in. So if you have any questions, visit our website. You might find some answers. Contact us. We have a general email address. Follow us on Twitter. And tomorrow, uh, you also hear more from today's speakers. So our Serbian, our Slovenian, and our Croatian speakers. So this is here, but we also have other partners on the project. You can contact any of us that you wish. Later on when this uh, this presentation is made available. All of those logos there are linked, so you can go immediately to their website. So before I hand it over, just wish you all to keep calm, keep warm with district heating. Thank you. Thank you very much, George, uh, for this uh, introduction of the universe of Keep Warm and indeed uh, highlighting some stuff that we have available for the audience and for our target groups. So we encourage you to, to use these tools, um, the collected material that, uh, that um, we identified to keep uh, Europe sustainable and uh, therefore visiting uh, our website and the Learning Center in particular, but also looking at um, the showroom, which we have prepared for you, as well as now the newly published today, Tata, the uh, booklet on uh, keeping Europe sustainably warm. Now, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Marco Sava from Regea, the Regional Energy Agency of Northwestern Croatia who is part of the consortium and has looked uh, and helped many utilities also with the perspective of implementing solar energy in district heating systems. Marco, over to you. I'm keen to learn more. And uh, last uh, mentioning before I hand over, please use the question and answer and we will get back to you. Thank you. Um, hello. Thank you for, for our introduction. Uh, I will try. Um, I think that you now see my presentation. Um, so just in general to present myself, so I'm a project leader in uh, Regea. As Tarsten mentioned, we are uh, leaders of Work Package 4 in this project. And uh, regarding our, our pilot projects, we dealt uh, with the integration of solar energy in district heating systems. So we will present uh, our cases from Croatia with uh, with the uh, uh, lesson flows. First, uh, we will um, do a very short introduction on solar thermal and some technicalities about integration in this reheating system. And uh, later, we will go through our case studies, lessons learned, uh, replication potential uh, in Croatia, and finally, uh, financing of our, our projects. So, <clears throat> Solar thermal collectors have been used uh, um, uh, for a long time now. There have been a lot of uh, different manufacturers, a lot of different designs. Um, we are currently uh, working out with one uh, Swiss company which produces vacuum plate collectors. They heat up the uh, water for the district heating systems up, up to 200 uh, degrees. 
uh, and the temperature of the fluid inside of the vacuum uh, plate collectors is uh, slightly above 300, um, uh, 300 uh, Celsius. Uh, that is uh, possible due to the max pressure of uh, 16 bars. Uh, it is designed for all these reheating applications. It, it can be used for the space heating for, for the preparation of this reheating, uh, domestic hot water and, and uh, various other stuff. But most often the temperatures are between 65 and 180. Uh, 80 uh, degrees. Uh, this is the picture from the the newest, I would say, the newest uh, solar thermal uh, uh, integration in district heating systems in Geneva, in Switzerland, which is um, um, commissioned last last week. Uh, regarding some technical also parameters, the specific load of the whole. Uh, system is around 70 kilos, which has to be uh, taken into account uh, uh, regarding roofs, regarding the installation on the roofs and on the metallic constructions, as you will see later we dealt with uh, a, a lot of problems uh, uh, on installation on our roofs. Um, uh, once the system is, is uh, installed, it uh, operates uh, without any, any need for human supervision. Uh, it uses a very advanced uh, monitoring and regulation systems. It has sensors. Uh, also, uh, it can use uh, two types of uh, fluids. It's a demineralized water uh, or, or oil. Uh, also, it has a very advanced safety systems. And uh, based on what we have seen so far, it can, uh, it can uh, easily uh, operate and uh, easily be in synergy with any other uh, sources, especially biomass, and uh, that's also our, our focus in the, in the future. This is the short scheme, simply a short scheme, uh, where uh, you can see the panels, uh, solar uh, collector panels, uh, connected to the uh, district heating system. Uh, also, we are, are trying to um, um, integrate uh, thermal storage. And uh, there is the whole uh, uh, project uh, schematics on how to uh, uh, connect this system to the district heating systems. Uh, basically, you transfer the energy uh, via heat exchangers, which are connected to the uh, district uh, heating network. Um, uh, now, going uh, slightly uh, in more in detail about our pilot projects, we had a three. Uh, two planning, uh, planning phases and one implementation phase. Uh, the first planning phase is uh, finished, and now we are proceeding with our engineering studies and additional project documentation, which is necessary for public procurement process and installation of equipment. We are obliged to do that because our um, uh, partner in this project, uh, our uh, national district heating company, has, uh, has to do the public procurement process. Um, um, this is uh, something that we are trying to do in our pilot projects. First, we have something called technology breakthrough with this integration of a pilot project simply to show to our district heating that it is achievable, this technology is reliable, and that we can uh, produce and achieve our goals of the decarbonization. Next phase, after the installation of pilot projects, we have a testing phase where we measure the data and compare it with the calculated uh, values in the feasibility studies. And then uh, we have two upscaling projects. The first one is to achieve 100% of summer heat load and to integrate thermal storage. And if that uh, uh, appears to be feasible and uh, if it will work okay, we will try to achieve the 30% of total heat demand, which is the uh, current uh, legislation requirement uh, of of um, uh, connecting of um, public building renovations and then other building renovations in Croatia. Uh, regarding our pilot, which we will uh, present today, it is uh, district heating systems in Zakršić, uh, which is a satellite city near uh, Zagreb. Uh, it is uh, operating on a 90, 70 uh, degrees Celsius, and this is a natural gas. We have a uh, we have a really really a large area which will be shown later a green area where we can install the uh, solar collectors. So we uh, decided to go for two scenarios. The first one is a small scale pilot project, and the second one is meeting 100% of summer uh, heat demand. Regarding the first one, 
uh, we achieve uh, we achieve a uh, significant uh, significant um, energy savings and uh, this small uh, pilot project should um, take account around five percent of uh, total heat demand in 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 this in this district heating systems, which is very good for the pilot pilot project. Uh, due to the non-disclosure agreement, we are not allowed to discuss about prices, but I can I can uh, share any other other uh, details uh, regarding the positioning. These these are uh, these are two fields where which will be Furtherly investigated for our solar uh, potential. Also through the key form, we are trying to connect one another, uh, one uh, public building which is uh, uh, next to the uh, greenfield number uh, one. Uh, regarding the large scale project, uh, we are uh, going for a, a, a much larger impact, and this scenario should achieve 100%. Uh, uh, coverage of uh, summer loads. However, as you will, uh, as we can discuss later, there is a, a huge problem with the overheating of the system, and the thermal storage is um, a must-have in, in systems like like this. Uh, now, um, I would simply go through the lessons learned in Keep Warm, uh, because uh, this is the first time that we are dealing with the solar energy in Croatia. We had a lot of uh, uh, scientific papers, but this is the first time that we will see on-site uh, production and on-site operations. So, as far as um, we uh, understood so far, uh, those systems have low operational and maintenance costs, especially in uh, in uh, comparison to the fossil fuels. But also, we have high influence on key, uh, seasonal heating between summer and winter periods. I assume that most of the district heating systems have that. And so that is the main limitation factor, because we cannot uh, simply install uh, uh, as many solar uh, collect, uh, thermal collectors as we want, uh, simply to, I don't know, achieve 30 or 50 percent of yearly Heat demand uh, because uh, during the summer the system uh, can uh, 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 can uh, become very dangerous. It can overheat and it can do some serious technical uh, technical damage and also financial damage for the district heatings. Uh, therefore, heat storage is essential for further development. Uh, and um, uh, uh, based on, on um, uh, feedback from our uh, manufacturers of the equipment and our uh, consultancy. Uh, these uh, thermal store, uh, th these thermal collectors should be used for the covering of the summer demand, and then later by achieving uh, 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 by integrating more and more heat storage, we can uh, uh, flatten the curve and 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 use the solar energy in uh, periods be uh, before and after uh, summer. Also, it is very interesting to see the position of solar collectors. In our pilot cases, it definitely influenced a lot on the feasibility, since we had to uh, uh, calculate and um, uh, plan some financial funds for the anchoring of the roofs or for installing of, of, uh, solar, of uh, metal construction. Uh, these are other two projects in our, our uh, um, country which also participate in here. As I said, in Samogor we have a really questionable static stability of the rooftop. This is our proposed solution, so we anchor it with a metallic construction. But uh, now we have to see what will um, our uh, designers say about that. In the city of Velika Gorica, we have um, um, we have planned to install uh, solar thermal collectors on the metallic constructions, which also increases uh, costs a lot because the estimated cost of these metallic constructions is 300 euros per uh, square meter, and we are planning to install around 2,000 uh, square meters of solar uh, thermal collectors. So yeah, it, it can add up uh, to the costs a lot. Regarding the large scale, uh, as, as said previous, our ultimate goal is to achieve 30% uh, of renewable energy sources in these strategic systems. Uh, uh, regarding uh, projects outside of the keep warm, we also have two other cities we have, which have the same problem about the preparation of domestic hot water, and they are already uh, have been contact uh, through our project, and uh, we will try to see if uh, our uh, solutions can be applied there as a replica uh, replication models. 
Uh, lastly, a, a few more sentences regarding the financing, which is maybe the uh, the most important thing. Uh, our national district heating operator uh, agreed to invest their own financial funds in, in our three pilot projects. But regarding the large scale and upscaling of the projects, we will aim for national funds uh, in the next uh, financial envelope of uh, Republic of Croatia, and we will try to apply to external funds, namely innovation funds. We will uh, apply all three projects as 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 uh, one uh, above uh, under 7.5 million uh, euros. So that is more or less it. I think that I um, I, I was very concrete. So I will be here for uh, any uh, questions uh, which you have regarding the Q&A passage. Thank you very much, Marco. Indeed, um, very concrete and uh, bringing us uh, breakthrough cases uh, for Croatia with us. Yes. Uh, so that's very appreciated. Maybe one uh, one question uh, which yes. um, I have received here through the chat, and actually also if if you are not um, mm -hmm. allowed to use the Q and A due to some technical issues, sometimes this happens. Please, uh, if you have the chat function available, then. Just chat your your question. Mm -hmm. Here a question uh, in relation to um, the thirty percent renewable energy uh, resources within the district heating system that is uh, stipulated by the Croatian legis legislation. Mm -hmm. um, would you would you say that um, uh, that eventually and maybe at which time uh, one can go beyond uh, this thirty percent? Is this uh, based on the the current um, on your current experience with this um, solar thermal integration, is that easily to be done? Is it is it achievable? Uh, yeah, well, um, I think that there is a lot of preparatory activities before achieving it and before going above 30 percent. And the main problem is the current situation in uh, uh, distribution network in the heat uh, network because it is um, it is not connected in the single single system. Once when our uh, district heating company uh, does that. We will be able to install as many solar collectors as we can on these two fields, which are in total about 50,000 uh, 50, square uh, meters of area, and we will uh, be able, to, according to our calculations, to achieve even beyond 30%. However, it is very important to uh, include uh, heat storage because without that, we cannot we cannot. Uh, keep the heat in the system for long enough to maybe use it in a more colder periods like in the autumn or in the winter. Yes. Okay, and uh, maybe another uh, question mm -hmm. before we hand over uh, in relation to the um, uh, to the integration of different types of renewable energy sources. Yes. I think you mentioned also biomass as as a, a source yes. which, which is uh, on the table as an option for utilities to use. So maybe yes. uh, here a short reflection concerning the uh, the integration of solar thermal as well as biomass. Uh, where are yes. uh, just as guidance, uh, which option to choose when, or uh, maybe the integration okay. is already um, the best option that should be yes. considered. Yeah, well, based on the situation in each district heating system, uh, you, uh, we, uh, we see that in Croatia, we can use both solar thermal collectors and any other uh, renewable energy sources which can act as a base load. For example, biomass, which will produce up to 50, 60, 70 percent, and then the rest can be used by the, uh, can be uh, produced by uh, uh, solar energy. The problem is that uh, that system, uh, that uh, energy source is intermittent. So we can have a nice inter uh, in, uh, synergy and interaction between uh, several several um, uh, renewable energy sources. In our cities, we are trying, uh, as for now, to do solar and natural gas as a transition, and then later we will try to see if we will go for the cogeneration plants or uh, biomass, such as in uh, district heating OSIEC, which will be our next target for the replication model. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Marco, um, yeah, right. for answering uh, the the burning questions to keep us warm uh, so far. And it's a perfect bridge uh, towards our next uh, speaker. 
Um, and I would like uh, to welcome here uh, Signe Martin Kista from the Magmala uh, Regional Energy Agency. Uh, and she will talk about the use of biomass indeed um, and uh, for district heating in Latvia, but also um, give uh, some lessons learned on smart devices in relation to using this renewable energy source. Signe, thank you very much for being with us. Over to you. Thank you for introduction and uh, warm greetings to everyone. So I will start my presentation. We all are familiar with the European uh, Union climate and energy targets and all the member states, including Latvia, are going towards lower energy consumption, lower emissions and uh, towards uh, use of more renewable energy sources. And Latvia has committed itself uh, to increase share of renewable energy sources in this heating by 0.55% yearly. And uh, as currently already, uh, share of renewable energy sources in this heating is about 55%. And uh, Latvia is ranking uh, as third after Iceland and Lithuania in the European Union by number of population which are using uh, district heating. So in Latvia, about 80% population are using district heating. And in total, we have 633 boiler houses and 175 cogeneration plants. And total heat network length is about 2,000 kilometers. And uh, one third of these uh, are located in our capital, Riga. And currently, in heat supply is dominating biomass, as you can see in these graphs, especially in boiler houses. And in recent years, uh, the number of sources of biomass heating has increased 2.5 times. And uh, uh, <clears throat> historically, coal and peat and uh, oil products uh, are substituted by natural gas and uh, biomass. And in future, as you can see, we have still space for biomass growth. And firstly, uh, I will tell you about uh, drifty heating uh, systems which are involved in key plan project uh, as drifty heating pilot systems from Latvia. And first one comes from Jatopos Siltums, uh, which, is, which is a municipal company uh, of Jatopos City, uh, where 24,000 inhabitants are living. And this is one of six boiler houses, quite small, uh, which is providing 6% uh, of total heat supply. <clears throat> and uh, it is working uh, and uh, supplying uh, heat and hot water to 15 buildings. And its fuel mainly is wood chips. And uh, as uh, uh, technological equipment of this boiler house uh, is outdated and energy intensive, um, the main plan is to fully automate this boiler house by replacing old uh, wood chips boiler and also by replacing old gas boiler and uh, in addition to ins uh, by installing uh, ad additional uh, small capacity gas boiler for summer loads. Um, but uh, uh, it is planned to, to continue to work uh, on uh, fuel of, of wood chips. And the company has already started uh, to realize this business plan uh, and on own cost, it has already installed both gas boilers as the uh, situation in market now is uh, such that the gas is very cheap. But priority of the company, of course, still is to replace uh, biomass boiler and it will be done as soon as possible as the EU uh, funding will be available and in result efficiency of this boiler house will be increased and also diversification of fuel sources will guarantee continuous work of this boiler house. And if we speak about uh, smart devices used by this company, uh, they are using video surveillance, remote reading of ex heat exchange meters, and uh, after uh, full business plan realization, uh, automatic monitoring of this boiler house will be possible. Uh, our next second district heating system participating in Keyburn Project Pilot uh, district heating system is located uh, on countryside, out county, with a population of 7,000 inhabitants. 
and also is municipal company. Uh, and uh, this is really small boiler house, but uh, using fuel is wood chips, and uh, it is uh, supplying only heat for five buildings. And uh, the company has chosen to realize quite small scale project in order to reduce electricity consumption and heat losses and staff costs because now four operators are working in this uh, boiler house and they are planning to install, uh, uh, they are planning uh, to change uh, uh, pipes uh, to automate uh, heat supply uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, but uh, realization of this project is suspended due to ongoing uh, administrative territorial reform, which will end uh, by the end of next year, uh, and uh, because the Alta municipality will be merged with two neighboring municipalities, and now all the projects are like uh, frozen. But uh, still, company believes uh, and uh, is ready to realize uh, this project as soon as possible, and also with precondition, if EU uh, funds will be available. And uh, the third district heating system involved in Key Farm, uh, in Key Farm Project as pilot system uh, comes also from the same uh, county, from Alta County, and belongs to municipal company. Um, and it is located in small parish uh, named Bene. And here, company owns only heat grid almost one kilometer long and uh, through which uh, heat is supplied to 12 buildings um, and this heat is purchased from local uh, biogas cogeneration plant. And uh, in order to become independent and avoid uh, to several risks, uh, uh, it is planned to install a company's uh, own uh, boiler house, uh, biomass boiler house, uh, perhaps container type boiler house, where as fuel could be used uh, as pellet as wood chips. And uh, it will be done as soon as possible, again, if uh, EU funding will be available. And if we speak about smart devices used in out communal epoch, when uh, both uh, boiler houses uh, are equipped with smart notification system. And they are planning uh, to install remote reading meters and heat exchanger and possibility to regulate heat units. And in the remaining time, I will just introduce you with Smart and Green uh, this heating company from the other city, uh, where 55,000 inhabitants are living. And uh, Fortum is now in brand in energy sector. It operates in 10 countries and it, it provides uh, heat to tw in 24 cities. And in current circumstances, when climate changes are visible and felt, urbanization is ongoing and digitalization is spreading, the company has committed itself for a cleaner world uh, by transforming energy supply, by improving efficiency of resources, and by offering smart solutions. And uh, Fortum Yalgava is operating in Yalgava city since 2008. It is a really large uh, plant. Uh, producing as heat as electricity, uh, and it is providing heat to 420 buildings. And uh, it, it's fuel 90% biomass. And uh, in, in 2013, the uh, largest biomass cogeneration plant uh, uh, was built, and uh, this ambitious project was uh, realized by Fortum Investment in amount of 70 million euros and co-financed uh, by EU structural funds in amount of 6 million euros. And uh, this allowed to switch from imported fossil fuel to local renewable fuel. And uh, within this project, innovative solutions for heat supply were invented, like a building of pipe under uh, the river Lielupe, uh, which binds together uh, two coasts of the city. And also recently, in 2019, uh, 5,000 cubic meters uh, large accumulation tank was built, which also allows to improve uh, efficiency of this generation plant. And here you can see uh, graphs uh, about the Alberta city and uh, produced heat in 2018 and CO2 emissions in 2018 versus 2005. 
And uh, although heat production has increased, uh, CO2 emissions uh, have decreased, and mainly it's due to start of operation of the biomass cogeneration plant in Yalga City. And here we can see uh, changes of fuel structure during the last eight years, and we can see that from starting operation of cogeneration biomass plant, uh, biomass of fuel is about 80%, uh, and uh, last year it was already 90%. And if we speak about uh, smart devices, uh, of course, this cogeneration plant is, is uh, modern with modern equipment, and the control of cogeneration plant is automatic, and uh, smart tools as drone systems, uh, GPS, go online cameras, and others are used, and the operators are highly qualified, and their uh, reaction to different unusual situations can be trained and checked in training simulator and remote equipment management is ongoing. And uh, biomass cogeneration plant equipment uh, is maximally automatized in order to optimize stuff. And all the automatic systems are set up uh, according to highest safety standards. And uh, in addition to smart devices, to automatic equipment, uh, Fortum Yalgava also uh, daily uses several IT programs which are developed for provision of efficient heat and electricity production, like this uh, MOLONET, uh, which is production and modeling program, which helps to make smart decisions regarding production processes. <clears throat> and uh, also another program which I could mention in daily usage is Maximo, also specially elaborated for more custom asset and maintenance management system for production and operation planning, and it provides professional maintenance management. And uh, continuous supply of high-quality fuel is important for such large-scale biomass cogeneration plant, and therefore uh, logistics and weight automation system is established, which allows to regulate movement of vehicles, register supplies, taking samples, and et cetera. And in order to minimize air pollution in the plant and in the other city from production processes, there is flying ash automatic collection system established. And uh, in conclusion, I would like to just emphasize, no matter how big or smart these existing systems are, in all systems, transformation toward greener in terms of use of fuel and technologies and towards more energy efficient operations will be beneficial as for society, as for climate. And uh, it is worth to upgrade uh, all these heating systems in all Europe by replicating our key farm approach, which we have applied in our pilot district heating systems, and also by replicating uh, experiences from other district heating systems. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Signe. An applause from my side. I believe that everybody uh, uh, can agree here. Um, thank you for highlighting um, and for exemplifying the the uh, increase of biomass, uh, not only in the case of Yalgava particularly, but also in general. Um, towards um, uh, on on a country level, and here uh, also emphasizing that uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy go hand in hand and should go hand in hand because also eventually biomass is not um, available on on um, uh, to, towards uh, infinity. So uh, at least not not um, if if we switch. Um, the fuel system within a country, but maybe also in, uh, in Europe as, as such. So maybe here a reflection from your side, the increase of biomass use in various sectors uh, or the maintaining of, of the use of biomass in various sectors, but now also the increasingly use of biomass within the heating system. Um, how can we ensure from your perspective of an energy agency working in Latvia to um, make that supply uh, sustainable? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, regarding the Latvia, uh, situation is such that the territory of Latvia is covered with woods. Half of territory uh, is covered with woods, 55%. And uh, currently, uh, available uh, biomass products um, uh, 
is the larger than demand. So we are also exporting lots of outside Latvia, and uh, we have quite good uh, policy from Ministry of uh, Agriculture, which also is responsible for for uh, woods. Um, and uh, yes, and uh, also all district heating companies can uh, buy uh, biomass products from neighbor countries, Estonia and Lithuania, and uh, they uh, can also use virtual tools. We have special uh, virtual biomass exchange platform, Valtpool, where you can get uh, biomass products for uh, best price and of best quality. So, did I answer? Um, yes, and maybe we we go into that uh, then to further uh, in further detail with our last speaker. Before I hand over to our next speaker, I would like to ask a question that uh, Luca Angelino has has posted, and uh, it relates to um, your your signals that actually EU funding and structural funding is quite important also here for for the district heating system and modernizing it. The question is um, uh, in relation to that, um, and, and uh, Luca says that many modernization projects seem to rely on EU funds, as you just uh, explained, Signe. Have you explored alternative sources of financing, such as uh, private investments through PPPs or ESCO modules or uh, coupled with building refurbishment, uh, crowdfunding, lending mm -hmm. to other types of uh, finance? Can you yes, uh, it's a really good question. Of course, we have researched alternative financing sources and also within Key Farm Project, uh, uh, working together with all pilot district heating systems. But our situation is maybe special because our pilot district heating systems are not uh, only our pilot district heating systems, but majority of district heating companies in Latvia are municipal companies. And we are very related to uh, municipalities' uh, financial situation and budget, and uh, their uh, financing policy. And uh, it's um, it is sometimes hard, and uh, there are some restrictions uh, to use, for example, ESCO services for municipal companies, and uh, some alternative financing. Uh, we have here in Latvia a special institution for. Uh, also, for which giving opportunity to get loans uh, for municipal companies too, but uh, the interest rates are still uh, too high, um, and the uh, budget of district heating companies um, is very limited. So uh, everybody is like the first option to use is uh, EU funding, of course, and if it is it is not available, then. Uh, we would start to think of another alternative. So we are now waiting uh, new EU planning uh, periods program, which will start to operate next year. So everybody is preparing for this. And alternative uh, financing is staying behind it now. Thank you very much, Signal. Indeed, uh, pointing out that here the uh, ownership structure is quite important also for which financial model uh, is to be chosen. Uh, if I now look at um, uh, the just transition mechanism, the just transition territorial plans and the just transition fund, um, and looking at energy poverty, which is also an issue here, uh, a very important topic on keeping Europe warm, uh, then I think um, let's look into uh, these funding streams and uh, identify and maybe also advocate uh, for um, for the importance of, of heating um, in in this field. So having said that, I would like now to hand over to yes um, to uh, Nayek uh, Joko and uh, Jo Zinsman from uh, Kessner and uh, the Jozef uh, Stefan Institute, uh, taking cases and lessons learned from Slovenia, talking about the roles of distribution of district heating to the development of sustainable heating. Over to you, thank you. Yes, thank you, Karsten. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is uh, Nate Jurko from Energy Agency Xena from Polonia. We are 
one of the partners in uh, of Slovenia in the Keep One Consortium. Another is uh, Jozef Stefan Institute, which is here represent, represented by Mr. Yuri Tishman. Uh, I will briefly represent, represent the Slovene district heating context, then the challenges of uh, district heatings, and then uh, showcase some of uh, uh, renewable energy systems which were integrated in or in past years or in this year uh, because of uh, Kipuan project at least, uh, and uh, this is basically it. So. Uh, we will start with Slovenian district heating systems. Uh, so we have around 100 bigger, bigger, or 100 uh, district heating systems uh, that covers about 10% of uh, total heat supply in Slovenia. Uh, that means around 106,000 customers, consumers, Households and this is presents 12% of Slovenian households are connected to the district heating systems. Of course, these uh, households are mainly in the larger uh, towns and cities. Uh, we talked before uh, with Signa about the ownership of the of the district heating system in Slovenia. This is usually the local service of the service of general economic interest. So they are basically public companies. Uh, or the companies established by the municipalities. We, we also have the commercial distribution and the private distributing system, but the, their share is quite small. And what are future challenges for, for our uh, district heating systems? First is average annual losses are estimated to be around 15%. Uh, we'll talk about this later. The temperature is still too high to enable more uh, renewable energy assist, uh, renewable energy integration, um, which is also because of the quite uh, uh, quite poor and old uh, networks. Uh, so we need to ensure cost competitiveness, and despite decreasing the decreasing heat demand, this is basically some kind of bad circle that we are all in. And there are a lack of strategic framework and supportive activities, funds for systematic decarbonization of this heating system. Uh, for example, uh, we have three, three biggest district heating system in Slovenia uh, are covering about two thirds of, uh, of this uh, heat supply uh, of this heating system, but, but they didn't get a single euro uh, for innovation from the state for in the past uh, in the past ten years, uh, even more now they are facing the uh, the decreasing heat demand. So they pr their budget for investment and uh, for innovation of the networks are slowly decrease are, are lower and lower because they cannot they have to uh, they sell less heat of course and they have less income. Uh, and this is some kind of bad circle that we are currently in. Uh, now, now let's talk about the primary, primary energy use. So we have the coal, which is still around 65%, but this will, this will uh, reduce, this will be reduced uh, drastically in the, this year or next year because the, the Ljubljana district system are uh, going to the natural gas, so the coal will present rest, around 30%. Uh, we have around 60% of renewable systems and some other carriers. So, what we find out in the Kipporn project, what we, what trends we kind of uh, see, so that the DH consumers connection increased in the year 2017 and 2018, but the newest data is that they are actually decreased in the 2019, so that we have less user in 2019 than we have in 2018. Uh, the share of renewable system and excess heat is uh, slowly increasing, and uh, the carbon uh, intensity is planned to noticeably decrease by 2021 due to coal phase out of Ljubljana district heating system. So. Uh, what is the policy stance uh, at, the moment, at the moment? So the goal is to uh, to increase renew renewables for 1% per year by 2030. Uh, 
uh, all black and brown hole, uh, this will be replaced in the next year. So the black and brown hole is important in the district in Ljubljana, another uh, coal-based district heating system is Slovenia, the second largest, but there is from local sources. So of course we have local source, local lignite. And uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction uh, expected as a result of building renovation and the edge retrofitting. So I talked about that earlier. Um, what action we recommend? Uh, so uh, we, uh, the national government sh should uh, somehow initiate investments in renewable uh, generation and use of excess heat and reduction of temperature levels. Uh, integration of large heat pump, pumps and heat storages and sector coupling. So uh, uh, this is between the power sector, the electricity sector and the heat supply sector. Um, and yes, the edge network planning supported by the heat mapping, heat mapping tools. This is a beautiful tool developed by the Josef Stefan Institute and you will talk about that later. Uh, now, uh, the most important uh, renewable energy source in Slovenia is, of course, biomass. You can see the map of Slovenia. This is the chicken, some kind of chicken-shaped country. Uh, and you see where the green or the dark green is. There is above 90% of uh, wood there. And all the yellow is about 50%. And we do not have less than 25% of wood in any of the Slovenian municipalities. So we are very rich with wood. So the the logical mm, the logical is that we use uh, this wood for burning, also for burning. Um, so the use of biomass is quite well accepted in the society, especially in the rural areas. A little less in the in the towns and cities because of. Uh, fine dust pollution and PM particles pollutions, but this is uh, somehow manageable. We'll see this in case of two, uh, later. Uh, so, uh, and the biomass have a, a big political support. So you have constant, you have constant, constant incentives for building new biomass uh, district heating systems to building small or micro grids on biomass. So just connect a few buildings in the villages in the rural areas and uh, yes trends right now is that we have 42 biomass district heating systems uh, this number will increase for at least two uh, with the help of keep warm these are pilot projects in Slovengrad and Ptui uh, and a few others of course uh, in the last few years, the share of rest and excess heat is around 70%. Uh, this share will increase slightly in the uh, next few years. Uh, so yes, I, as I said, there are quite uh, quite good political support for, for for biomass. So Ministry of Infrastructure, Infrastructure offers subsidy for investments. Slovenia Eco Fund offers subsidy for investment. Uh, we have feed-in for CHP, so combined heat and power production through biomass and so on. So, uh, and quite a lot of promotional activities for using the biomass. Uh, regarding biomass, I know the, the biomass is mostly used also in the Slovenian uh, household. So, uh, around 55, 56% of Slovenia primary energy is based on biomass. So. Uh, it's not just in district heating systems, it's, it's also used in households uh, in non-urban uh, areas. Uh, yes, and now we are with the, our first case study. This is uh, uh, our pilot project. Uh, uh, the Keep Warm pro pilot project is the district heating system is Ptui, in, in Ptui, Slovenia. Uh, this uh, district system was built in 1975. Uh, the total boiler output is uh, around 27 megawatts. The, the annual production is around 12,000 megawatt hours. So you can see the, what global warming means in practice. So what is the size of the of the boilers and what is the actual need of the uh, of the energy is significantly lower right now. 
And uh, together, we, in the scope of Keep Warm, we prepared a feasibility study that shows that uh, the PTUI is very that the PTUI should go to the should transfer to biomass. So uh, we prepared an investment documentation for uh, biomass boilers. Uh, the company applies to national co-funding and uh, receives this national co-funding. Uh, so now this is how the new uh, system will look like. They will install new biomass boiler with output of 3 megawatts and also the new, new uh, gas boiler just for ensuring the uh, the operation during the winter times, and uh, uh, they will stay with one old boiler in the reserve. They will also they also decided for uh, decide for grid expansion for 1,600 meters with several public buildings and schools connected uh, to this network. The whole investment costs are around uh, 3.5 million euros. 1.2 million euros they receive subsidy from Ministry of Infrastructure and 2.3 million million euros the company the, the public company of Ptui, uh fund but they, they found their own sources uh, so now uh, I will switch the presentation to Yura so Yura if you can unmute yourself and start uh, with presentation yes thank you very much for, uh, Nate um, as noted, or actually as I was presented at the beginning, my name is Yuri Shishman, I come from uh, Joseph Stefan Institute. I think um, maybe just to add to the previous, to some previous presentations, uh, I think this case uh, regarding the use of geothermal energy is maybe worth to mention inside the Keep Home project as well. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have much time to go into a bit more detail, but just briefly, maybe to share our experiences regarding uh, development of this kind of projects in Slovenia. Um, uh, heat pumps or geothermal energy in, uh, let's say, private houses are very popular, are being very popular. And um, there are some examples also uh, where uh, heat pumps were uh, installed as a source of, or let's say, mean of heating in um, multi-family houses, but there is not yet any uh, this reheating system which would uh, include or integrate the large heat pump. So uh, the opportunity we got through the cooperation with uh, the uh, heat uh, so distributor in the city of Maribor was really excellent opportunity for us to tackle this topic and to uh, get, let's say, experience regarding installation of this technology or integration of this technology. Um, so it uh, is about the upgrading of the district heating system. Uh, on the picture on the right side, you can see, let's say, the current, uh, let's say, network of the district heating system in Maribor. Uh, it is rather large. I think it's the third, uh, the third largest in Slovenia. I mean, large for Slovenian circumstances. So the idea of the of the utility was to uh, install a large heat pump and to integrate it into the district heating system in one of the uh, on one of the locations. It's the uh, it's the location on the northern part. It's called Pristan, and the um, this location is very close to the uh, to the to the river river uh, drava which is running through the through the city and besides there is a very rich uh, uh, let's say stream water stream uh, to, for the use which can be used also for uh, shallow geothermal uh, heating uh, so the the idea was uh, next please uh, can you switch to, to the next slide Nate? Oh, thank you very much. So the idea was, let's say, to, uh, to analyze the uh, potential of geothermal energy under the, in that area. So we have uh, made um, cooperation with the Geological Institute of Slovenia, who is equipped and uh, um, capable of doing such analysis. 
uh, we actually made a kind of uh, geothermal um, an analysis and ge uh, hydrogeological verification, which was, of course, the basis for this kind of analysis. Uh, we made also a modeling and an analytical cal calculation of uh, the uh, situation, so how much uh, of thermal energy is needed and how much can be obtained through the available sources. Uh, and at the end, there were actually several uh, options available, but due to some circumstances, we decided for the option so for to utilize the the heat of the river and uh, to integrate also the heat storage. Next slide, please. So we made a summary, or actually we made a feasibility study. And um, uh, so we decided actually to cover, we wanted to cover actually the base load with this uh, heat pump so that we could really uh, use the largest possible uh, time of operation. But due to the fact that the, uh, that uh, there is an area which is which has a water protection uh, for the drinking water uh, the we were actually forced to use or to focus just on the thermal uh, energy from the river so we decided to uh, actually um, install the heat pump which would work about 6000 hours a year so when the temperature of the river is above the needed or the pro projected uh, temperature level. So maybe just to highlight the most important result, uh, the most important result is actually the increase of uh, the share of uh, renewables in the heat supply of this system. So with this installation, the total increase would reach about almost 12% of the of the heat would be supplied by so renewables that means by the by the by the geothermal heat so of course the uh, installation of heat storage is, is a must we have also calculated several options but this already belongs to uh, lots of details which are uh, which have been provided through this project just the next slide please um, i would like to say that uh, this city is. Yeah, you have one more minute. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to uh, highlight that this city is a good example uh, for also for cooperation with with uh, let's say in such a project or in such pilot project because they had uh, they have a very good vision and uh, they wanted to extend the network. They wanted to uh, involve new sources of energy, also waste to heat. Uh, not wa just waste heat, but waste to heat, so the, the incineration of waste. And uh, they have a real clear vision until uh, even until 2030. So just to conclude, maybe uh, I would like to say a few words about the uh, specifics of Slovene. Uh, next slide, please, just with conclusions. So the, in Slovenia, the pr prioritized technologies are geothermal, which is not yet utilized. We, uh, waste heat, of course, biomass, as it was already mentioned in the beginning, and the installation or integration of heat storage is, is also very important. So the, it was also very uh, clear that uh, without long-term vision, these heating systems are not will not be able to really um, uh, transform their operation because of uh, the situation as it was presented at, at, at the beginning. There will be very painful tasks for a number of uh, district heating systems in Slovenia. The most, for the majority, is how to increase the share of renewables, and for some of them, how to meet the energy efficiency directive criteria on efficient district heating systems. So thank you, and uh, any questions are welcome. Yes, uh, you thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, providing us the cases. And it's good to see that Keep Warm actually um, stimulated physical change of uh, thermal infrastructure in Slovenia and beyond. 
um, uh, to, to bring these cases with us. Uh, in the interest of time, I would suggest that if you have questions um, um, concerning the cases presented, could you please uh, put them in the chat or question and answer, and we will um, we will answer them, Yuri and Nayek will answer them immediately uh, and live uh, here during this webinar right now. Um, but in the interest of time, I would like now to uh, go to our last case. And uh, I would uh, very much welcome Goran Svilkovic from the Winker Institute uh, here presenting uh, a case from Preboy, um, uh, the heating plant, uh, heating plant in Serbia on its path towards a complete transition of heating from fossil fuels to biomass wood chips. Go on, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. Have you switched on the presentation mode? Goran, now you can share your screen. But we cannot hear you for some reason. Julian, maybe you can unmute him. Yeah, he's unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay, I will share the, share the screen and start the presentation. Just a couple of minutes. Okay. And then, is it okay now? Hello? Hello. We hear you, but we don't see the presentation yet. Do you see my presentation now? No. Okay, wait a minute. Now? Yes, now we see. Is it okay now? Yes? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. My name is Goran Zhivkovic. I'm coming from Vincha Institute of Nuclear Sciences, and I'm going uh, to present you uh, DHS of Preboy uh, and their path over the complete transition of heating from fossil fuel to biomass wood chips. Actually, uh, people from DHS of Preboy uh, do not speak English very well, so I'm going to this in their behalf. Okay, so uh, city of Priboj is uh, located uh, at the west of Serbia, very close to the border of uh, Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina. At, uh, it's on the slopes of the mountain uh, of Zlatibor and uh, on the banks of the river uh, uh, Lim which is nice, very beautiful river. Okay, it has about 15,000 inhabitants. So it's a very nice countryside there, and if you haven't been there, I warmly recommend it to you. So if you uh, could see, uh, the position of Pribo is here. So as you can see, actually, it's uh, very, very close to Bosnia and to Montenegro. And uh, okay, it's uh, it's uh, located on the parts of Serbia very rich uh, with uh, with uh, uh, wood forests. Here you can see that uh, average uh, cover average coverage of uh, of area in Serbia with uh, with forest is about 39 percent, and uh, coverage of, in this region is uh, average about uh, 45 percent. That means that. Uh, in the vicinity of, uh, of uh, Priboj, there is the largest producer of wood biomass in the country called Yellow Star, situated in the nearest uh, city, something 30 kilometers from Priboj. That means uh, also that uh, there is a high concentration of wood biomass producers in the region. Uh, there are over 30 companies in the radius of 80 kilometers. And what is also very uh, interesting that there are in the region 10 associations of private forest owners of a total 18 
that there we have in Serbia. So uh, Priboj also has a very good uh, road infrastructure. And what is also very important, excellent, excellent, excellent uh, regional cooperation with the biomass and the energy efficiency wood uh, working group of Zlatibor and also with the regional development agency of Zlatibor, that means the people from, uh, from municipalities. Okay, so you can see, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so DHS of Priboj operates uh, from uh, 2012. It belongs to the municipality. Their grid is about uh, five kilometers. They cover about 1,400 uh, households with uh, 81,000 uh, uh, square meter heating surfaces and as well about uh, 100 office buildings. So uh, connected load is about uh, 16 megawatts and boiler output 20, uh, 29 megawatts. And it used at, at the moment uh, mainly uses oil uh, beside the uh, wood chips. So uh, their investment plans is to uh, construction of a completely new biomass heating plant of about 80 megawatts on wood chips. And their construction started about uh, two weeks ago. And it is planned here, it is planned to be finished in uh, April 2022, but they are, they hope that it will be finished, uh, November next year, hopefully. So they, uh, uh so primary work steps and investment drivers. As I said, uh, the, uh, the planning, uh, location and selection of location finished in, uh, uh, February this year. Uh, all contracts with investor, uh, investors on, on uh, March, and uh, all permissions and documentation was finished in, uh, in uh, September this year, and uh, the, the, uh, it, it, the, um, the production of of the of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of a plant uh, already started. So strategic background documents uh, was uh, energy sector development strategy of the Republic of Serbia for the period 2025 with the projection of 2030, the national sustainable development strategy, and also what is important that Priboj has signed the covenant of mayors. Stakeholder involvement, uh, involvement the leading stakeholder is the Priboj municipality and DHS operators, KfW Bank, uh, Public in the, uh, Investment uh, Management Office, and the uh, regulatory and energy agencies. Other stakeholders, of course, would be producers. Producers, Serbia Shume is a, a state producer and a, a private producer, Yellow Star. Required resources, Financial investment is about uh, 7 million euros. 16.5% uh, comes as a grant from German and uh, Swiss government, and the rest is loan for, from uh, KfW Bank. Bank. So at the moment, uh, Priboj has uh, uh, about 3 megawatts on, uh, on wood chips. This is about 18% uh, of their necessities. The rest is oil, as I said. And, uh, it, and uh, on the right uh, side, you can see, you can see the, uh, the building uh, of, the, of the main building of the uh, DHS. So, and as I said, their plan is to, uh, to uh, go uh, completely off on uh, producing uh, energy from biomass in very near future. So there are three phases on their transition to uh, to, to using uh, uh, renewable energy sources. The phase one was the replacement of coil boilers in the elementary school with wood pellets, about uh, 0 0.9 megawatts, or uh, with in three boilers. You can see these three boilers here on these figures. Then in phase two in 2019. Uh, one capacity of 1.8 megawatts on wood chips, 
uh, with uh, which hits uh, two primaries, one, two secondary schools, and one children's dispensary. It costed about uh, one million euros uh, and uh, financed by the government of the uh, Republic of Serbia through uh, public investment management office. Okay, and the phase three is that phase that I mentioned already, eight uh, megawatts biomass boiler room started in September uh, 2020, and uh, it costed uh, for boiler costed about uh, 5.25 million euros. Uh, complete reconstruction of the heat pipeline costed uh, will cost about uh, 1 uh, million euro, and of course, uh, substation replacement about 750,000 euros. The, okay, okay, on this, uh, on these uh, pictures, you can see, you can see here that 1.8 megawatt uh, uh, facility. As I and uh, here also you can see again this uh, 0 0.9 uh, megawatt facility of the uh, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Gorin. Oh. And uh, before I uh, open the floor again uh, to any questions to you, but also to Nayak and Yuri, and I see that uh, there has been a, a question concerning. Uh, the former presentation, so the Slovenian case, um, here about uh, which recommendations uh, can you provide to others to steer uh, geothermal, uh, the geothermal potential here further, maybe also linked uh, to the question um, to which um, data uh, uh, people should start gathering, which regulations should uh, should be uh, looked at or could be should be influenced uh, to prepare the customers' needs, uh, for instance. Um, so, in relation to geothermal, um, before we then maybe go back to the um, to the Serbian case, uh, Jure and uh, yes. Jake, would you like to answer? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the question. Actually, so that uh, uh, availability of data is important, but availability of knowledge as well. So that means that, uh, uh, first of all, there should be, if you want to utilize the geothermal on a larger scale, so our experience is that you need to have a really good data about the, uh, so uh, geothermal potential and hydrology as well, uh, hydrogeology as well. And for this reason, actually this was, also, our experience from this uh, project, which I was presenting, uh, because uh, our idea was to use, to utilize actually the, uh, the thermal river, uh, the thermal uh, energy from river, and also the shallow thermal, uh, uh, shallow geothermal energy. But at the end, due to um, a regulation on the use of the drinking water, uh, on the underground water, it was not possible to utilize the uh, the so the the deep depth source. I mean the shallow geothermal. So this is actually if you if if someone is doing let's say is wanting to to uh, make such kind of project, you have to have real good data, not just technical, but also about. Uh, other exclusions and limitations in certain area. This is particularly important for large scale heat pumps. For small scale, this is really not big issue, but for the large scale, this kind of analysis is, is much more important. And in, in our case, uh, some data were available by us, I mean, from some uh, databases, but uh, specific data which are related to geothermal uh, uh, situation uh, are, of course, and also the, let's say the, the tools for uh, modeling and for uh, mathematical analysis uh, are in, let's say, are, uh, so they are uh, available through the Geological Institute. So someone needs to support this kind of feasibility analysis who has knowledge, who has tools, who has experience. 
So this, of course, is the better basis, I mean, to come to, uh, let's say, good uh, result at the end. Thank you very much. Uh, and then the last uh, question, then maybe to, to go on, um, in, in connecting to what you just said concerning uh, data availability, but also knowledge to be built. Um, here, Goran, I uh, noted that um, the project you presented were also uh, to some extent influenced potentially from uh, foreign investments um, and uh, even even grants uh, that have been given. So from your perspective, uh, and maybe looking also at Keep Warm and the European exchange of experience uh, in the field of uh, renewable heating, uh, to what extent is that uh, possible? Uh, and to what extent is this actually needed very much uh, for uh, countries like Serbia? Yes, I think, yes, the, you, you are quite right. And I think the influence of, uh, and uh, the information that are passing uh, through, through this project is uh, really helpful for uh, not only for the, the DHS that are involved, but also uh, through, through, uh, uh, through giving the information to the other, to the other uh, DHS that we tried to involve somehow in the project and give information. Uh, I think that, uh, that that the necessity of let's say uh, changing to uh, using uh, re uh, renewable energy resources in a larger extent uh, uh, gets gets uh, uh, I would say. Uh, uh, gets on its importance and people realize uh, the necessity of using it. The, the, the small problem here in Serbia is that there are parts, that there are regions that they do not have uh, enough enough resources to 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 assure to assure uh, biomass for uh, for for uh, I mean to to assure. Uh, regular uh, uh, enough uh, supplies for, uh, for for it, so uh, we have to we started to do this on the regions first, uh, reach uh, with the biomass, and later on. For uh, what is important uh, is of of course a uh, uh, network of roads. For example, this Yellow Star company, which is very uh, interesting, imports their products to Germany as well. So. If they can uh, uh, import it to Germany, of course, they can uh, uh, supply uh, other parts of Serbia as well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Goran. And um, there isn't time to let everybody, uh, every speaker speak again, uh, but let me just uh, summarize in just one minute uh, some takeaways that I took as moderator. So uh, from Marco, we learned that uh, solar thermal integration uh, is possible. It's actually a breakthrough. Great to see here in Croatia. Um, uh, also, it is related to um, the um, regulation system, meaning 30% renewable energy in district heating systems in Croatia as a driver. Um, and I took with me that uh, biomass uh, can be the base load, um, can provide the base load, and then uh, firm, uh, solar thermal integration is uh, very much uh, possible as, a, as another stack to, to add on to uh, the overall sustainable uh, renewable energy heating system. Then Signe from uh, SEA uh, outlined uh, how to increase uh, biomass actually in, in various aspects uh, throughout the country uh, um, and the, uh, the importance of energy efficiency in, in relation also to the uh, renewable source biomass, which is, however, also um, uh, should be uh, sustainably available. Then gas is, is currently quite cheap and is quite a competitor. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, also here, structure funds uh, play a significant role uh, to then invest uh, also under this current conditions um, into renewable energy sources. Uh, we also learned that uh, uh, public stakeholders and the different natures of ownership of district heating systems also play an important role uh, to access public or private funding. So let's look further into that in the future. Nayek um, explained and highlighted that um, we have currently in Slovenia uh, in the district heating system uh, um, a supply of uh, by 56% uh, delivered by coal. However, 
um, and natural gas actually is is to be seen as a uh, as the as a bridging technology here. Let's look further into um, into these details of financing um, concerning this bridging technology as as Europe wants to. Uh, go uh, climate uh, become climate neutral by 2050, and actually, uh, the European Parliament has just voted for 60% uh, emission target for 2030 to be taken note of. Uh, the 1% renewable energy sources increase in the district heating system is actually uh, very much in line with the 1.3% uh, uh, issued by the um, Renewable Energy Directive. Um, tax incentives are not yet there, uh, as far as I understood, um, another point to be taken. Um, climate change is impacting currently already uh, at the heating seasons and, and uh, revenues of uh, utilities. So also climate change and adaptation to climate change should, should be uh, looked at. It was great to see that uh, people has uh, has initiated stimulated uh, physical change also in relation to heat pump utilization of, of river thermal energy uh, or in the case of Goran uh, explained in preboy that uh, a, a switch from fossil fuel meaning oil to 100% renewables is is possible uh, very much also uh, stimulated by political Driving, uh, as I understood, um, Priboy is a signatory of the Covenant of Mayors. Maribor has also a vision uh, related to district heating um, uh, systems, also linked uh, to energy and climate targets. So that is an important uh, aspect to be taken note of. So you can see there are many other um, questions still that needs to be answered. You all have our emails, however, and I'm inviting you to use them and, and to ask your question also via email. But uh, last but not least, I would like to uh, invite you um, to, the, uh, to join us on the 12th of November, and maybe we go to the next slide, to uh, join us in our uh, final uh, conference of Keep Warm, where we'll have the possibility to look into the financial, into the um, yeah, renewable, but also the energy efficiency aspects uh, in much more detail. So again, stay with us, and uh, we are looking forward uh, to see you next time on the 12th of, uh, of November. Again, uh, a broadcast in in an electronic version, in a virtual version, but nevertheless, very excitingly, with speakers lined up from DG Anna, various cities, and uh, various um, yeah, directors, uh, high-level persons, uh, as well as uh, technicians uh, to answer your question. So be there. Um, uh, we would be happy to see you again. With that, thank you very much, all the speakers, and thank you very much uh, for the audience that stood with us and asked, asked your questions. So hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.